Please begin. Uh, we are uh, Brixis, BrixCAD, and Civil Side Design together, and uh, our creative, innovative solutions in civil engineering designing. That's what we would be presenting today, and how it can help you deliver better infrastructure. So Brixis, uh, we are global providers of cost-effective modern CAD, BIM, mechanical, uh, civil, and common data environment products. So Brixis is part of the Hexagon AB, which is a publicly traded company, about 40 years of history in the infrastructure segment. And we have about 400,000 users around the world. Uh, globally, we are headquartered in Belgium, and uh, we have other development centers on, in the EU. And Singapore is the Asia Pacific headquarter with offices in US as well. And we have local offices in Bangalore, Pune, Dubai, Hong Kong, Seoul. So we have a worldwide presence and uh, Sydney, Australia as well. So looking at the hexagon family of solutions where Bricks, CAD and civil side design is applicable in the first workflow that you see there is the traditional uh, TPS survey and also the UAV which uh, can capture the data which is of the as-built conditions. And this data can be further taken into BricsCAD and civil side design for your design purposes. You could also use Leica scan stations such as the P50 to have long range scans and capture as-built a reality in a point cloud model or a LiDAR data, bring it into BricsCAD through Cyclone and then use it further for your design purposes. In the third workflow, which we will discuss at the end of the uh, presentation, will be the BIM to field 3D layout workflow using Connex, where you can manage your road infrastructure projects much more efficiently. So all begins with geospatial data, as we all understand. So BricsCAD offers spatial manager, which basically can be used to import uh, zoning related shape files uh, from any database that uh, enables you to bring in shape files, you could uh, define your options in terms of how you would like to import these shape files. So this is just a short video in showing how shape files can be imported inside BricsCAD, which is the beginning of your master planning or your city redevelopment or road design journey. So after all the settings that have been made. Shape files can be directly imported by zone or by a particular um, area in your uh, surface or in your city. And these models can then be accessed as line works or 3D data, which is specifically uh, to parcel data that can be imported as part of your master planning projects. So this is the shape file that can be imported and used inside BricsCAD. And then further, these days, open source data is becoming quite common, and uh, we give access to importing OpenStreetMap data, which can be imported right inside BricsCAD. So basically, here we are in the city state of Frankfurt, for example, and we are going to bring in a particular segment of the city with all the streets, which is the current streets in your city can be exported with uh, particular settings as a ODBC database. And here inside BricsCAD, you're able to import this OpenStreetMap data. Uh, you can choose if you'd like to bring in highway data, or you'd like to bring in railway data, or you'd like to bring in uh, bus paths or bicycle paths into your design systems. And once you have defined so, which specific types you would like to bring in, the entire data can later be populated and visualized inside BricsCAD. And here you can directly start using this as built data for your uh, design and planning works of your roads as well in the cities, for example. The similar data can also be exported to Google Earth. So we offer the interoperability connections with OpenStreetMap and also Google Earth import and export capabilities as part of the BricsCAD solutions offering. So in BricsCAD, you're able to uh, conduct horizontal swept path analysis for different types of vehicles. In this case, for example, a specific type of a truck, which is a, a Mercedes Benz Archigo. And you can define the width of the road or the carriageway 
for your uh, vehicle. You could uh, define wheel trails and setbacks from particular uh, widths of your roads and a coll collision detection can also be conducted. So in this case, we see that as the vehicle travels along the path, a very simplified 2D model of this vehicle path analysis for any types of road designs and junction design can be utilized by designers in the initial design phases for a much more um, gaining a solid uh, start for your design work using swept path analysis inside BricsCAD. And of course, we are completely industry standard DWG based compatible and building smart certified for IFC interoperability and also interoperability with traditional civil infrastructure platforms like DGN, for example, LandXML, simple text files, CSV files, and the creation of alignments and strings can be done inside BricsCAD. And further to this, now I would like to introduce a civil side design, which is our application on top of uh, BricsCAD, which can be utilized for uh, your road design works. And here I would hand over to my colleague Shane to please share his screen and take us through uh, civil side design on BricsCAD. Thank you, Sagar. If you can uh, uh, stop your share, I think then I can uh, hop on and share. Yes, so thank you. Look, uh, I'm going to do something unusual. I'm going to do a very quick PowerPoint and then try and show you some live theatre uh, of using the software. So civil side design uh, really adds the, the civil engineering, road design, pipe design um, inside that bricks cut environment, uh, all in one and all inclusive. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly walk through um, some of the points. Look, what, what's the, the value proposition? Uh, it's very productive. Um, it's um, very affordable. Can't, we can't uh, see your uh, screen. Uh, Have you shared already? Okay. Uh, is that better? Uh, yes. Now we can see your presentation. Yes. Apologies. You missed, you missed the first slide. Um, so... Uh, so some of the things that are great about, about the software, it incorporates the IRC standards uh, for uh, site distance, horizontal vertical geometry, and it automates uh, a lot of those uh, repetitive tasks, um, intersections, curb returns, cul-de-sacs, knuckles, roundabouts. Um, everything's inside the drawing, so uh, as you design, um, you're basically drafting your output and getting your production. And we work on the basis of building uh, windows for design, so you have a, a design window for vertical, for cross-section, and for 3D uh, modeling at the same time. Uh, and that gives you that flexibility of seeing what's happening in the plan uh, and all the different views at the same at the same moment. Let me uh, just kick on and, and show you some of the main um, sort of elements of the software. So this is a short uh, video which I'll, I'll discuss. So firstly, at the core, uh, we certainly build uh, terrain data and allow you to do earthworks calculations. So uh, analysis, um, small and large scale jobs. Um, we also have uh, data sharing uh, for collaboration. Um, at the land development front, um, core to the software is that automation process, um, site distance. Uh, uh, sorry, grading. Shane, we don't see your screen. We cannot see your screen now. Okay, let me uh, pause for a moment. It was fine earlier, um, the presentation we could see. Is that back? Um, no. no. Now it is. Yes. Now, okay. Be careful of the, the buttons I click on. So just in terms of, of road design, uh, we, we're certainly capable of building uh, large scale uh, road networks, 25 kilometers plus, uh, it's used uh, extensively across Europe for highway and expressway design, uh, site distance to uh, IRC standards, and we have intelligent um, batter conditions. So you can certainly um, design what needs to happen uh, outside of that main road pavement. Um, just moving on from there, we, we have an uh, underground piping system design, so um, this is a very easy way for you to check for clash detection. Uh, we incorporate drainage design. We also link out to HECRAS for 2D flood modelling. Uh, road reconstruction, uh, certainly we're a string and template based um, software, 
So we allow you to build uh, whatever sort of models uh, you need. And this is sort of a bit of a picture of the software in action for editing the vertical and the cross section. And what you'll see is that um, as you make changes, uh, you can see those changes update, both in terms of your modeling and in terms of your output. This is a publication cross sections. So uh, that's sort of um, what I wanted to uh, nearly talk about with PowerPoint. Uh, one more slide. Just in terms of your outputs, uh, what you design in CAD uh, is what you publish to CAD. Uh, so you're, you don't have revision control issues. Um, and basically, you've got a window of what you see is what you get. Um, so it's very um, good and strong and powerful uh, in the drawing environment. So what I'm going to do now is to show you a little bit of uh, the software in action. Um, and I understand I, I don't have uh, very long to show. So just in terms of surfaces, uh, this drawing actually has a surface in here. Um, easy for you to change the way that looks, but that could come from uh, Kogo points, could come from the satellite geometry, which is where this surface came from. Build it from 3D data and XML and also a BricsCAD um, import. The model viewer can be opened at any time uh, and I'm going to open it just so you can see that there's a surface built uh, and something for us to, to build on top of. There's also some uh, alignments in the drawing, uh, so you can sort of see those in the in the background. So this is a uh, model viewer. The um, beauty of it is it's a completely open window, it doesn't stop you from working the drawing. Uh, you can exaggerate, you can turn on the triangulation, you can query elevations. It's also our lever to do 3D site distance. Okay, so even though that looked like a flat site, five times exaggerated, um, it's quite significant. And there's already some design here. Uh, and as I design, this will update. Okay, I'll just set this back to a scale of one. So what I'm going to do is, is quickly just talk to you about um, alignments. Uh, so we've got an alignment here. Uh, alignments can be created from polylines, so it's really easy to make. Um, if I go to edit one, uh, one of the beauties in the software is that sort of uh, understands the speed tables. So you can set up um, the IRC tables um, as you see fit in the speeds and it will flag to you where there's a problem. So you can go to any curve, tells you what you need to have, make that your radius and you can make sure you have design compliance. You can also build tables um, straight into the drawing. Now to create a, a road from this, all I need to do is to uh, apply a template. Okay, so we've got a template editor. I'll just get in and, and quickly make a road. So we pick a cross section shape and we'll just uh, enhance our sampling a little bit. And what we then have is a road design. Now, it, there's a number of things that happen. Uh, firstly, we get a, an independent uh, vertical design window uh, that we can work on. Uh, we can also right click and view a cross section anywhere and that can show depths, uh, offsets, uh, all sorts of, of different invaluable information. Um, and if we click on auto model, we'll build a surface of that and what will happen is in plan, uh, we now have the road there and if we have a look in model viewer, I'll just refresh the view here, um, we'll also see uh, that road design. So you can basically design in context um, as you go. In terms of um, validating the design, the grid editor here flags to me where I don't meet side distance requirements based on just the center line. So as a designer, I can quickly move edits, uh, lift and lower, change the vertical curve of uh, the, the road design to make it comply. Uh, if I cause a, a big problem, I can actually have the line marking of the road change um, its line marking based on the site distance requirements. So what we'll see under analysis and site distance is we can show uh, the site distance results of our road design straight away and we can generate a report highlighting uh, where we have design issues. So I've actually done a perfect design, um, but if I went and pushed this around, um, what would happen is I'd have that line marking uh, update dynamically. So uh, just moving on from there, um, Earthworks, at the click of the button, you can get Earthworks calculations uh, for one or any um, number of roads. And that updates um, as you make a design change. You can also very easily balance those Earthworks 
uh, over a certain change range uh, to uh, obviously optimize um, your end result. There's also uh, long section and cross section plotting. Uh, what I'll do just uh, for the sake of time is I'll just plot uh, a long section so we can see how that looks. So this is very customizable. What you see is what you get. Um, if I load a style in to get started, you know, you can put in your own title block, it paginates, um, and when you go plot to layout, you're writing the information directly into CAD. So um, design and publication happens in the one place. Now there are a load of alignments here. So what I want to do is just show you how easy it is to build your network. Okay, so I've got an alignment here for a, an access road, a cul-de-sac at the end. And what I want to do is bring them together. So this tool here, uh, which is a, a evolving tool of, of AI and, and machine learning, is going to interrogate this drawing for me. It's going to find the alignments. It's going to suggest how they should be used. Uh, so the entrance road here, it's suggesting it's a road. Um, these two other roads that sit close to Necklace Road here, um, it's highlighting those as, as being an assistant uh, to the road to change it. And what Project Assist is doing is, is collating that together and saying, okay, you want these two to change the width of the road, but we could uh, initiate string control uh, left and right sides of the road, just using the alignment to get started. Um, for the car park design road, uh, there's a template you can assign. You can assign a template for your other roads. And it says here, oh, you want a cul-de-sac at the end, right? Because we have a cul-de-sac shaped alignment. Once I compute this, software is going to put the entire model together. Okay, so we're going to have a whole collection of new strings, we're going to have a new surface built, we're going to view that in 3D and get volume information against it. Uh, under the surfaces tab we can compute volumes between any two surfaces and visualize that in 3D. So um, I'll just um, I'll just quickly show uh, the the output, uh, and then I'll I'll hand back. So if I just go back to model viewer here, and one thing I do want to say is that this is all a connected network. You make a change to one road, the other roads will update. Um, you change your road design near the cul-de-sac, uh, the cul-de-sac will update, and you can publish this out uh, into various formats. Okay, so um, I might drop my uh, visuals at the moment, knowing the time, uh, and uh, Sagar, if you wanted to uh, wrap this out. Sure, uh, we'll, I'll take another two minutes, and then we would go um, to the last so one more minute. Um, otherwise, I have a couple of questions, then we'll not have time for that. Um, if you could just finish in a minute, yeah. Uh, all right, then we can just go to questions. I'm fine. Let's let's let's. Should yeah. I uh, go to the questions then? Yeah, fine. Let's go there. Okay. okay. Uh, so uh, one question is for Mr. Rourke. Um, can we do overlay road project in uh, civil site design? It's a question from one of the participants. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We call that that resheet, but you can um, certainly design over the top of an existing pavement put in saw cuts, um, extend the pavement. Um, there's some really good and powerful tools for that. Uh, and certainly in my history in local government, that was the toolkit, that was the end of the toolkit that I used. Um, so certainly it's it's a proven performer uh, for road yeah. reconstruction works. Okay, and uh, Mr. Rourke, uh, for the civil site design, um, what has been your experience so far in India? Uh, like, which all uh, states or segments have you deployed uh, for road projects? Uh, this technology. Uh, look, uh, it's it's fair to say that um, there's there's been some users in 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 India, but we're looking to grow um, mm -hmm. that that side of the business, and that's why we've built the IRC standards uh, into the software so that it's easy for users to to pick it up and be productive and, and generate productivity. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Thorat, uh, one question for you um, that's also there from a participant. Um, how do you think uh, the BIM technology has evolved in highway construction in India? Uh, well, it has been progressing quite well since the last four or five years. And thanks to our uh, government, which has been uh, very proactive in terms of 
how they have implemented uh, digital technology or they have been mandating it on certain projects. Specifically, the Metro has been driving the adoption of digital technology in India. And then we have the high speed rail. And mm -hmm. of course, all these technologies, there, there are so many alternatives today that people can go to. And it's, it's, it's not only just in terms of uh, interoperability, but also being cost effective is important so that all the segments of the industry, including the SMEs or large scale corporations can access this technology. So different solutions call for different measures. And that is where the technology is moving here today in India. All right, uh, on that note, uh, we'll close the session then. A big thank you to both of you for sharing very interesting uh, presentations and also for being a part of uh, sponsoring this conference as well. Uh, thank